America's News Special Report, Sandy's Aftermath. And good afternoon to you. I'm Diana Williams. And I'm Bill Ritter. We're interrupting programming to bring you a special report. Governor Chris Christie in New Jersey uh, at the FEMA Storm Relief Center opening in, in Brick Township. I want to thank listening. the Secretary for coming to New Jersey today and seeing the magnitude of the damage to our infrastructure for himself, because I'm going to be calling him for a lot of money to help to rebuild this stuff. So I wanted him to see it face to face. Um, you know, I've flown over this twice, um, once by myself and once with the president. And uh, what I said to my folks yesterday when I was going to Bergen County was that I, I can't appreciate what really happened until I get on the ground. I need to get on the ground, get me on the barrier islands. I want to drive on Route 35. I want to see what happened in these towns. And so first they told me I couldn't. And then that's the really good thing about being governor, because here I am. Um, and uh, what I've seen, the destruction that the lieutenant governor and I have seen um, along the beaches in Bayhead and Maniloking is, is just unfathomable. You can't recognize it. I have driven on Route 35 since I was a young child coming to the shore with my parents. And you can't recognize the places anymore. Um, and it is, um, it is heartbreaking. Heartbreaking for every New Jerseyan uh, to see uh, our shoreline cut in half the way it was uh, on Monday. But it's important to see the extent of the damage so you can get a handle on it and chart a course for rebuilding. And that's what we're about to embark upon, all of us together. We're inching closer to normalcy here in New Jersey each day, and that's our focus. Uh, but there's some things we need to get done in the interim. For instance, this morning we opened up Atlantic City again, and we opened up the casinos. We're ready to repopulate Atlantic City with those people who were evacuated on an emergent basis from Atlantic City, and we're staying at Rutgers and at Monmouth University. They're going home today. Human Services has worked with Atlantic City officials to develop a plan. Now the travel ban has been lifted there. We've lifted the travel ban for communities in Atlantic County, including Atlantic City, Brigantine Beach, Margate City, Longport Borough, and uh, for communities in Cape May County, including Wildwood, Wildwood Crest, North Wildwood, West Wildwood, Avalon, Stone Harbor, Sea Isle City, and Ocean City. To help those New Jerseyans still unable to go to their home without power, the Department of Human Services, in partnership with the Salvation Army, the American Red Cross, uh, Southern Baptist Church, and the Community Food Bank, is establishing 10 comfort stations for people to recharge, seek warmth, and access other amenities such as food and hygiene for people displaced as a result of the hurricane. First locations in Jersey City, and we're determining the best locations for the other nine right now. I'll have more to say about that tomorrow. I also understand personally the anxiety and stress that can come from not being at your home and being without power. Uh, it's an important aspect of the mission to try to provide some home comfort. For example, when I was with the President Brigantine on Wednesday, a woman told the President that her only request was a bariatric cot and one was not available to her. The President looked at me and I said, okay, we'll get it to her. And we shared that cot delivered to her by the time she went to sleep last night so that she could be able to sleep and sleep comfortably. I know there are other issues we have not yet handled to return ourselves to normalcy, so let me give you some updates on what we're doing. First, on gasoline. This is really a tale of two states. Soar south of 195, 90% of the gas stations are open and operating. North of 195, 25% of the gas stations are open and operating. We need to do much better. And so today, uh, I've assigned the head of the Economic Development Authority, Michelle Brown, to work with the private sector and FEMA to get this moving and focus on where the problem lies with each station whether it's power or actually the availability of gas. Um, where it's power, a lot of these gas stations are not equipped to use generators to get them going. The ones that are equipped to use it, we are sending, FEMA is sending generators there to get them up. Others just are not equipped to do that. It wasn't a requirement in the law beforehand. So on those, we have to wait for power to get up, and I'll have more to say about that in a second. On the availability of gas, um, we are working with FEMA and we have lots of the oil companies, Gulf Oil and Hess, have both said that they will deliver gasoline with the National Guard and FEMA to any gas station that's not giving out gas because they're out of gas. So we're on top of the gas situation, and I may have some more things to say about this tomorrow, but it's a north and south of a 195 problem. 
you are pretty close to 195 here. So if you're looking for gas, maybe instead of staying in the long line here, if you've got enough to get south of 195 and get into some of those communities, you're going to have a much better chance of getting gasoline than if you stay right here at least for the next 24 hours or so. So I saw a huge line on the way in for the Exxon station back here. You might be better off getting south of 195 and going into the communities there to go and get gasoline, at least for the next 24 hours or so. Um, secondly, um, we also want to make sure that we maintain the integrity of our telecommunications system, uh, our mobile phone system. They're under a great deal of stress because they're without power, too, and working off generators. So I signed the head of my authorities unit, Regina Gia, to take over a point on preserving those assets so that we can keep, because most people have lost their landlines if they're not at home with power, to keep your cell phones being able to run. Um, she's also, the third problem, is getting schools back open. I'm working with the Commissioner of Education today, and she is working with him to get the list of schools that will not be open come Monday, and then to find out why they won't be open. Some of them are saying because they don't have gas for the school buses. That we can fix. Some of them saying because they don't have power. We can prioritize schools to get power before homes. But we need to know what the problem is. So the Commissioner is working with each district today and his staff to get a whole list of that, we will then sit down with FEMA and either get gas to the school buses that needed to get kids to school or prioritize with the power companies turning power on to the schools before we turn them on to homes. We need to get kids back to school. That will make their lives a lot normal and I, I suppose make their parents' lives a lot less stressful. Um, first now, on FEMA, FEMA and, and everyone in, who's standing here in this area in Ocean County, you need to know. Um, you should start registering for assistance if you haven't already. The President has declared this a major disaster in Ocean County. All you need to do is call 1-800-621-FEMA. 1-800-621-FEMA. And uh, you register, and within 24 to 48 hours, a FEMA representative will be out there for you. Now, for those of you who are lucky enough to be in this parking lot with me, you see the FEMA mobile unit behind you. And lots of FEMA people back there to help you. You don't have to call 1-800-621-FEMA. You can do it with them here, or you can do it on your phone still and just use them to answer questions for you about what you're entitled to. Um, if you're seeking disaster unemployment assistance and live in one of the counties like this one that's been declared a disaster area, you go on to njuifile.net, njuifile.net. Register, and you can register for your unemployment benefits. These FEMA disaster recovery centers are being set up in impacted counties, in offices, and with mobile units as well, like the one you see behind me. These centers are boots on the ground assistance from the federal government to help answer questions, provide guidance, and get you the kind of help you need. There will be both federal and state staff in each center as you have questions and needs regarding cleanup and recovery. So it won't be only FEMA folks, but folks from the state government as well to answer any of your questions. The first Centers are opening today in Cape May at Cape May Courthouse and right here in Brick Township. The Bergen Disaster Recovery Center is expected to open tomorrow in Little Ferry, and Monmouth and Middlesex counties will open over the weekend. We're now up to 10 counties, including the disaster de declaration, and we're considering other counties as well as we do the analysis of loss. Secondly, on power. Now, we continue to make progress, but not fast enough, but remember we started off with 2.7 million people, or households rather, more people, households out of power. Yesterday we were down to 1.7 million. As of uh, noontime today, we're down to 1.4 million. So another 300,000 taken off in the first um, five, six hours of today. Uh, I called the utility companies this morning at 11 o'clock. I wanted from them a list of each town they were working in, the days they were working in those towns, and how many people they expected to restore each day for the next three days. I received that about five minutes before I came out here by email. It's a long list, but we'll be putting it out uh, to the press so that they can run it and you can see when your town's going to be reached and how many people in your town will be taken care of so you can start making some planning. Now, you know, all this stuff may go a day sooner or a day later, depending upon the weather, but we're going to get that out there to you so all of you can start to plan a little bit and have some certainty to your life as well. Starting at 10 a.m. this morning, trucks were out on the road again. Um, we are putting up, so you know how many people we're getting from out of state, linemen, 
tree trimmers and others to work on this problem. Um, we're setting up temporary housing at Fort Monmouth for 8,000 people coming from out of state to supplement the 10,000 people we already have between the three companies working to try to get it. So we're nearly doubling our workforce. I have to thank the governors from 12 other states who are sending these folks here. We're going to house them in temporary housing put up by FEMA at Fort Monmouth, feed them there, um, and get them out to work. And so that's going to be happening. The first temporary housing is set up at Monmouth Raceway, where there are two 2,000 bed facilities. We're currently finalizing a second location with the same capacity for the Bergen Passaic area. On the good news side, Atlantic City Electric expects to have all their power back up on the mainland by tonight and all their power back up on their barrier islands, including Long Beach Island, um, by the end of the day tomorrow. At that point, Atlantic City Electric will move all of their employees up to central and northern New Jersey to help supplement the out-of-state folks that we have as well. Next thing you need to know is about the roads. On the roads, since Sunday night, NJDOT has logged 524 closed state roads, obstructed state roads. As of today, I'm happy to tell you that there are only five state roads still closed out of 524 since Tuesday morning. The biggest cleanup focus for DOT centers around the debris blocking sections of Route 36 and Route 35 from Seabright to Seaside Heights. We have 215 contractors and 100 trucks clearing this 30 mile section of the coast today. I was just walking there. Um, you cannot believe the sand on Route 35 is midway up my calf. They're trying to remove that off Route 35 so that we can get people moving in that area of the state, not to mention what you've all, I'm sure, seen on TV, which is that Route 35 was cut in half and the New England created that manaloking. Um, we believe that by tomorrow, we'll have a temporary road to go over that inlet so that we can move more heavy equipment to the other side of there so that we can begin cleaning the road on that side and begin to give access to folks. Um, on public transportation, uh, New Jersey Transit bus service resumed this morning. 80% of New Jersey Transit routes um, were working this morning. Uh, we spoke to FEMA and we're uh, getting 200 buses from the federal government to supplement that to bring us back up to 100% service. And so by Monday, we will be back, I believe, at 100% service. New Jersey Transit trains are rolling again into Penn Station, New York with commuter rail service restored along the Northeast Corridor. Special schedule has been posted on NJTransit.com detailing service into New York City. Out of an abundance of caution, Transit suspended plans to restore service this morning along the Main Line, the Raritan Valley Line, and a portion of the North Jersey Coastline after a backup generator failed at our rail operations center in Kearney. He does stand in Kearney and in Hoboken. Two of our rail operations centers were under six feet of water. And so we've gotten the water out of there in most, for the most part, but we had a backup generator fail today, so we're going to put that off for another day until we start service on those lines. For those of you who use the River Rhine right rail service, um, that is back in service for Camden and Trenton. Um, four, next thing we need to concern ourselves with clean water. Clean water for everybody. We've seen deliveries of fuel that have increased, and it's keeping the generator running in our drinking water and our wastewater treatment plants while we're waiting for full power to be restored. We've lifted the boiled water advisories for Atlantic City Municipal Utilities Authority, United Water Sunset Ridge, United Water Highland Lakes, and we still have 10 drinking systems under boil water advisories. There are about 28 waste treatment plants with various levels of operational challenges, most related to the loss of primary power and flooding. The most important one is the PVSC, the four counties up in the northern part of the state, Passaic, Essex, Hudson and Bergen, portions of those. We are working now with the Army Corps of Engineers and the EPA. We have pumps coming from Washington, D.C. and Connecticut. The Army Corps has sent the dewatering team, which is on site as of this morning, uh, and the EPA is sending an engineering expert from Texas to help resolve the problem of the PVSC. But otherwise, we should be having operational clean water drinking plants and wastewater plants um, by generator power and then when full power comes up over the next few days, um, those will go back to normal. Uh, next, we need to worry about how we're going to deal with rebuilding. Now, uh, 
you know, as I walked along, and I walked along the beach today in Manilope and uh, in Bayhead, uh, it's unrecognizable, everybody. If you go there, you're not, once you're allowed to go there, you're not going to be able to believe what you see. Um, homes that have completely disappeared, you don't know where they went, but you know there used to be a house there, and homes that have been destroyed in, in ways that you can't even believe. Homes that are tipping over on their sides into the sand. Uh, homes that have the whole foundations taken out. Um, homes that have, have roofs and first, second floors off. Um, homes that have had the whole back of the house facing the beach taken off. I tell you this because I want you to understand just how destructive this storm was and how unprecedented it was in the history of our state. And so rebuilding is going to be a process. But I am absolutely convinced that we working together, committed to rebuilding, can do that over the next number of months and years. But it's going to take time. So my first job is to get your life back to as normal as it can be. And under these circumstances, to me, that's all about getting power back on, getting gas at the gas stations, getting your kids back in school, and making sure that we have clean water for them to drink, uh, and that kind of normalcy at home. We're moving very close to that. I will say this, though. I'm getting these plans from the power companies. If they do not meet these deadlines, they're going to have big problems with me. And so it's, it's fine for us to have shown the patience we're showing so far, and that's appropriate. They couldn't even begin to work until Tuesday afternoon. So here we are on Friday afternoon, and they've reduced the number almost in half, from 2.7 million to 1.4 million. That's very good progress. But the progress is never good enough until the lights are on in your house. And I understand that. You know, you feel really happy for your neighbor when he gets his lights on. <laughs> but if it ain't your lights, then it ain't mean anything, okay? So I get that. So progress is good, but my goal is to make sure that we get almost as much of the state as can receive power. Listen, there are going to be places on the Barrier Islands that I just saw. There'll be nobody there to receive power. And their homes are not either there or in the condition to be, to be inhabited. So I'm going to worry about getting 100%. But of the people who can receive power, uh, by Election Day, I'd like to see us get as much of that done as we possibly can. Let me um, say one thing about the elections as well. Lieutenant Governor is with me. She's the Secretary of State and in charge of elections in the state as well. Uh, you all be able to vote on Tuesday, if not before. Uh, we have extended, ordered the... Um, uh, mandatory opening of all county clerk's offices all weekend. You can go to the county clerk's office during all their hours, both today and over the weekend, and just go and vote. Um, no reason to wait. If your polling place has power, you'll go into your regular polling place and vote in the regular machines. If they don't, there will be a truck there that will be our polling place. And you'll go in there and you'll use paper ballots Vote normally as you would, but with a paper ballot rather than a machine if we don't have power by Tuesday at your individual polling place. I'm hoping most of them done. I, we need to make sure that we give everybody a transparent, accessible, open voting process on Tuesday. We have a national election that we have to make sure every New Jerseyan who is qualified and registered to vote has the opportunity to vote. And the system that the lieutenant governor has put together... Um, I believe will make it easy for you to vote. You go to the same place you'd always go to. And if the power's on, go in and vote normally. If it isn't, go in the truck where there'll be a big sign of where to go. Go in there and vote old school with a paper ballot. Um, it'll take us a little longer to count the votes this year if we go that route um, in a lot of places. But, you know, probably be a late night anyway. So um, everybody just uh, have some patience that day. And try to cut it off. You can do vote by mail in person at the county clerk's office through election day. So if you have the opportunity to do that, if you have the time to do that, if you have the inclination to do it, you should. Um, we are committed as an administration to bringing life back to normal as quickly as possible. Um, and I'm not going to allow anything to stand in my way in making that happen. Um, some reporter asked me yesterday, after I had the meeting with the utility executives yesterday, and asked them to have their parent company CEOs come in from out of state, uh, they, they asked me, how did I persuade them to do the things I've asked them to do? And I said, you know, people in New Jersey understand it. It's my charm and personality that persuaded them. It's normal kind of Jersey charm. 
Uh, they said, would you tell us what you said to them? And I said, no, there are children present. So we'll, um, we're going to work hard at this, everybody. Um, myself, the lieutenant governor and my administration um, are working around the clock to make sure that we get things back to normal. Um, so I appreciate your patience and your support. It's been extraordinary. Everywhere I've gone in the state, the lieutenant governor and I have been so warmly received by everybody who's also going through really difficult times. And understand that we um, are here to try to let you know that you have not been forgotten, that the state knows the things that we got to get done, and that this is what government is here for. Government is here for moments like this, when one person helping another just isn't enough, that the collective has to come together to help to rebuild our, our state. And that's what we're going to do. So um, I thank you for coming out here today. Um, the FEMA folks are ready to help you if they haven't already. Um, now, I'm going to take questions, but I can only take questions from the press because I just see, I knew, I knew. So you say, if I start taking questions from the public, this will turn into a town hall meeting, and I don't have my banners or my video or my music or any of that stuff, and I get very uncomfortable. So just questions from the press, everybody, and, and, um, and we'll come back down here for a town hall meeting another time.